A few years ago, I made a whole video where I challenged myself to switch over to Affinity. Some days were a lot of fun. I'm a design god! Some days felt like I was walking through a field of rakes. I learned to love Affinity Designer. The vector tools were great, but once that challenge was over, I ran back to the safety of Photoshop for a lot of my day-to-day photo and design tasks. It's me, not you. And it has been fun watching people dive into Affinity for the very first time over the last week or so and seeing them share their experiences online. And I thought, hey, I should share my experiences online. I made a cute little numbered list and everything. So let's do this. Number one, get ready to learn. This isn't going to be a plug and play experience. Give yourself a little bit of time. So in my experience, the more of a power user you are with any given app, the harder it is to switch over to a new app. For example, like 20 years ago, I was a web designer. I was designing websites every day in Photoshop. I did that for years. I know so many of those tools inside and out. I've got some serious muscle memory going on. Now Adobe Illustrator, I know pretty well. Uh, I've done a lot of logos and icons and stuff like that in there, but I wouldn't call myself a uh, Illustrator power user. Because I'm a mid user of Illustrator, I found it to be very easy for me to move my workflow from that over to the vector tools and Affinity. But moving over to the pixel tools from Photoshop, much harder. Not because Affinity Photo was harder to use, it's definitely not. It's just that I have so many of those Photoshop workflows that I've had built into me over two decades that when things are just a little bit different, it got a little frustrating. This is also the reason why I still use Premiere Pro to make these videos. I've tried DaVinci Resolve, I've tried Apple's Final Cut Pro, and I've heard great things about those programs, but I can cut together a video in Premiere Pro pretty quickly. It takes me three or four times the amount of time to do that in DaVinci because I'm learning as I go and it is incredibly frustrating to use. Not a knock against DaVinci, just my familiarity knocking against a new program. So you may see a lot of people online saying, hey, switching is easy. And for them, it probably was. For you, it might take some more time. So be good to yourself. Give yourself some time and patience. Number two, get a project to work on. I love tutorials. There are a lot of good tutorials out there, especially Affinity tutorials popping up right now. Even when you start up the app, it gives you some tutorials that get you started. But what I found really helped me learn the photo part or the pixel part as it's now called is having a project to do specifically a project that was like the other projects that I do all the time. The example I use here are thumbnails for YouTube. Every week I'm making one or two thumbnails for YouTube videos that I'm putting online. I made those in Photoshop. I have a workflow. I snap a photo. I remove a little dust and specks from the background. I change the background color. I add a little gradient, punch up the colors some more throw in some text and voila, I got a thumbnail. What usually takes me 15 or 20 minutes in Photoshop took me a little over an hour once I moved over to Affinity. But unlike a tutorial, all the tools I was using, all the shortcuts that I was learning are things I'm going to be using over and over and over again. Where when I was following a tutorial, I was following somebody else's process. So some of the things that they were doing applied to me, but a lot of the tools that I was learning aren't tools that I ever really need to use again, or maybe just rarely. Following my own project helped me build that muscle memory. This feels like a very organic place to plug my Affinity Designer course. Unfortunately, it's out of date. Don't buy it. I took it off my website. It, it, it needs to be updated. But my Learn to Draw in 60 Days course is still online. The course isn't for everybody. It's really built for beginners who are looking to learn the fundamentals. So if you've taken another tutorial, drawing tutorial and thought, man, what am I missing here? The course is designed to give you a whole bunch of fundamentals over the course of 60 days so you can hit the ground running when you jump back into those other harder art tutorials tutorials later. Anyway, that's still on my website. I should make a Black Friday coupon for that. Number three, before switching, check what fonts you most commonly use. Adobe's Creative Suite has a ton of fonts that you could download and work with. Affinity, unfortunately, does not. At least not yet. Now, Canva users have a large collection of fonts to work with, but as of right now, even if you upgrade to the pro version of Canva, you can't use those fonts in the Affinity Studio. I wouldn't be surprised if that's like a premium feature they offer down the road, but right now it's not. So that's why it would be a good idea to do just a quick inventory of the fonts that you absolutely need before you cut the cord. Fonts can be reasonably priced, but they could also be really expensive if you're buying an entire family. One cool tool that I found online is Font Squirrels Font Identifier. I'll link that down below in the description. What it lets you do is it lets you upload an image of a font and it will try to identify it. And then it's going to give you a list of fonts that are either it thinks it's that font or really, really close to that font. Some of those are paid fonts. Some of those are free fonts. 
Uh, there's different apps online that do the same things Font Squirrels is doing, but I like Font Squirrel because it also included some of those free options as well. So I got like three quick hits here. First of all, number four, Affinity can't do everything that Adobe can. It's a good replacement for Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign, but there are gonna be some features that just aren't in the suite yet. If you use Photoshop to make a lot of animated GIFs or things like that, you can't really do that here. There isn't any kind of timeline to work with. Number five, this is three apps in one, so you can work in one big file instead of moving back and forth between programs. This means that the way that you think about your workflow does have to change a little bit. It has only been a week since this came out, so even I, haven't like completely wrapped my head around everything yet. Number six, the interface. Along the top, there are four things, vector, pixel, layout, AI. Vector, pixel, and layout are kind of just your basic Illustrator, Photoshop, InDesign things. AI is AI. They call these studios, but you can make your own studio. There's three buttons along the side of those. You click on it, and this is going to let you toggle on and off the studios that you want to use or not use. For example, I don't need the AI, so I just toggled that off. You may need color grading. You can toggle that on so you can easily access it. And, of course, you can make your own. That is really cool, and probably how I'm going to wind up working because I need some of Illustrator's tools, but I don't need them all. Pulling over what I need into the photo part makes a ton of sense. Number seven, when you get Affinity downloaded, you should start opening up some of your old files. Affinity can open other file formats, which is really handy, but it's still a good idea to go through those old PSDs and AI files and see what happens. I talked about fonts already. Some of those are just not going to load and they're not going to work properly, but maybe you use smart objects in Photoshop a lot. Maybe you're using Photoshop's gradient tool. When you open those files are just going to render a little bit differently. Sometimes they just rasterize that layer that the gradient was on. Sometimes they kind of break it a little bit more. But understanding how your files are going to break, how the features that you use the most in Adobe are going to break is going to help you understand whether this is actually a valuable change over to another program or if you're just gonna miss some of the tools that you're gonna need the most. I use the gradient tool in Photoshop a lot, but the fact that it just flattens it out to its own layer, I'm okay with. And I can use Affinity's gradients instead. Number eight, Affinity can export a lot of different file types. I saw some people online worried that this was like a one-way street. Yes, Affinity can open Adobe files, but Adobe cannot open the AF file type. That is true. But within Affinity, you can export a PSD. If you're working in vectors, you can export an EPS, you can export a SVG, both of which can be opened really easily in Illustrator. So switching over to Affinity isn't exactly a one-way street, more like a cul-de-sac with some speed bumps. Now, just like you did by opening your Adobe files in Affinity to see how they break, I would do the same exact thing by taking your Affinity files or the exports from Affinity and opening them up in Photoshop and seeing how they break. Again, it's just good to know how your files are breaking to see if it's just a little thing you can overcome or if it's going to be a big pain in the butt down the road. And this is especially important if you're working on a team or working within an organization where other people are still using Adobe. Which takes us to number nine, kind of related, keep that Adobe subscription active a little bit longer. I saw a lot of people saying, now I can cancel my Adobe subscription and just go full blast into this. If you're just casually using these programs to like edit an image here or make something here, that's probably fine. But if these are an important part of your workflow, I would hang on to your Adobe subscription just a little longer while you get used to Affinity. And there's several reasons for this. I mentioned one of these before, you're not going to be as fast as you are on the other programs. So there's going to be a time where someone says, hey, can I get a quick change? And it might not be a quick change because you're not used to Affinity yet and you just need to go back to Adobe and knock something out fast. Nothing is more frustrating than trying to learn something during a time crunch. The other thing is just Adobe's weird subscription model requires you to subscribe for an entire year to get the good price. Good price. Usually with your contract after your year is up, you go month by month at that price. And so canceling will not incur that charge. That might be where you're at right now. However, once you resubscribe, you're kind of locking yourself in for either a whole year or a really big cancellation fee down the road. Keeping that subscription active for a few more months while you get used to the transition, probably a good idea. Number 10, if a product is free, then you are the product. And I have seen this comment more than any other on my posts over the last few weeks. Gonna, gonna be honest here, 
little annoying at this point. And while this is 100% true, I think it is important to note that the business model that Canva has is different than the business model that many social media platforms where this phrase originated from is. Those are advertising based and rely on selling your data to make money. Canva's business model is to upsell you on their services. So this is the first step in that direction. Right now, those services are their AI tools. You want to remove that background element or generate an image and need to pay a monthly subscription to Canva. They are offering Affinity for free to bring in more users so they can sell them their premium services down the road. It's just that simple. And I would expect Canva to slowly and steadily build out the feature set on these apps apps on that premium tier side to entice you to subscribe more and more and more over time. This is a very straightforward freemium model. I think the bigger and more pressing concern a lot of folks have is whether Canva will be able to access your files that you are working on to train their AI. It's important to note right now how Canva handles training is different from how Affinity handles your files from training. I do not have a Canva subscription, so I don't have the exact details and wording there, but from what I understand, AI training is an opt-out thing with Canva. Affinity is different because all of your files are locally stored and not used for training because they don't have them. Quick video clip of what they've had to say about all this. When we made Affinity free, some people assumed there had to be a catch. Let me be absolutely clear. There is no catch. We don't sell your data. We don't train AI features on your file. We don't monetize your creativity behind the scenes. Your work stays yours. Always. So you can choose whether you believe them or not. I do because they have said this very clearly in multiple ways, in multiple formats across social media. It's important to note businesses do not make these kind of clear public pronouncements without running them by their lawyers first and running them by their lawyers a lot. A statement like this has had the hell vetted out of it. We know what corporate doublespeak looks like. We've seen other companies that are dabbling in AI try to backtrack or obfuscate what they're actually saying. The clarity here is noteworthy. Now I get it. This doesn't mean it will be this way forever. Forever is a long time. The word forever in the business world means like two years, maybe three. But I definitely believe that that is how things are running right now. So those are my pointers, my thoughts on switching programs and sprinkling in a little personal experience. What is your experience? Are you switching over to Affinity for the first time right now? What's it like? Did you do it in the past? What helped you? Let me know down below in the comments. Thank you all for watching. I'll talk to you in a couple of days.